This building is on the National Register of Historic Places. Hello, I'm Darren Tracy, and I'm here at the Dr. Ferguson's Restoration Project in Glens Falls. It's April 26, my mom's birthday, 2018. And I wanted to show you how we are insulating the walls of this building. It's a brick wall. All the framing has been removed on the inside because it was rotted. So I wanted to spray foam these brick walls because spray foam is such a great insulating product and it's an air sealer. And also we'll add some strength to these uh, bricks on this wall because they're not all that sound. This particular wall in the background is only one wife thick. Wife is an architectural term for number of courses deep a brick wall is. Um, other parts of the wall are two wives thick. Not sure why they only went to one wife here, but it was brick facade and then tar paper and wood framing, which is rotted out. We've actually left some of it, but most of it we have removed. So we're framing on the inside with new two buys, and we have added spray foam insulation to the back side of the two buys essentially welding the 2x4 to the brick wall, which adds a lot of structural stability to the brick wall, which we needed. And we're also installing two inch rigid insulation and installing that simultaneously with our spray foam behind the stud. And it acts like a sandwich. We, we install the spray foam, insert the rigid insulation, and we feed several birds with one hand. We get our high R value with uh, insulation, the rigid insulation, and we get our air seal with the rigid, created by the rigid insulation and the spray foam. And we also pick up the structural integrity that the spray foam provides us. It, it really is a good bond, like it's, at, it's like adhesive. So we're really stiff here. Let me talk a moment about insulating. Uh, walls and historic buildings. Preservations frowned upon uh, applying spray foam directly to any surface or damaging any surface permanently and uh, certainly spray foam would affect the, the brick permanently so that's kind of a no-no. I did do it in one area where there was a single wife because that was needed for uh, structural integrity. So on the other areas where there was a thick enough brick wall to be stable. We used this hybrid process of just insulating the backside of the studs and then putting rigid insulation in between the bays. And in that way, we're not permanently affecting the brick. Uh, another consideration was uh, the breathability, the, having the brick being able to dry to the inside. Not going to dry to the inside with either of those methods, whether it's total spray foam or the rigid spray foam and uh, or can spray foam in the rigid insulation method that is described in this video. So the brick's gotta dry to the outside um, and it has been doing that. It's been a few years and it hasn't seemed to affect the brick. So that is working. The reason we haven't had any problem with drying is that the bricks have been able to dry to the outside because there's no coating stopping uh, the vapor transmission uh, such as paint. What we did coat the brick with was a sil um, silicate product. It's a masonry type paint, a mineral paint. It's very breathable. So when the brick does get wet, it can dry to the outside. It's one of the keys of not having a problem with this situation. We also coated the brick with uh, siloxane. It's a clear sealer, a vapor permeable, um, underused. Both of those products are underused in the industry. It's really important to insulate these old historic buildings. Uh, one really bad part about saving a historic structure is the uh, lack of energy efficiency in those buildings. Yes, you can get at the attic often and insulate the attic and that's really important, but often the, the walls go under insulated, particularly because the best insulation is added to the outside of a building like a blanket. Um, that's where insulation is the best but you can't do that on a historic building because you uh, take away that historic material that makes it interesting. So um, 
In this case, it's a really good method to insulate the walls from the inside. So I'm happy with this detail. Um, this is this is overspray, so we're gonna have to trim that back and install another bead and another panel here. Um, Brett, who's working here, was experimenting with this, but he's, he found out the way to go is have all this insulation pre-cut, start spray foaming from one side, insert a panel, insert the next panel, insert the next panel, and so on down the line. And as you, it makes for a really good insulation detail in this old historic building. So I had never seen this before. Um, it's It may have been used by other people, but I think it's a pretty unique way to uh, insulate a building and provide some structural integrity to uh, the brick wall.